I never intended to be a banker. I didn't, never intended to get involved with lending money to people. But uh, that's what I do now. It's because I wanted to find a solution to a problem. Poverty is not created by the poor people. Poverty is created by the institutions that will build the failure of those institutions to address the needs of the human beings. One day as I was going around in the village, I see a woman with the, uh, torn clothes sitting in front of her house and making bamboo stools. So I went near her and started talking with her. Uh, she started explaining she makes only two penny a day. Then she explained that she doesn't have the money to buy the bamboo, which goes into this bamboo stool. So the trader lends her the money, 25 cents, with the condition that she has to sell at the price that he decides, not the market decides. As a result, she gets only two penny. He actually converted this woman into a slave labor. And I thought, I can give her 25 cents. She doesn't have to go and borrow the money from him. But I resisted for a while. Let me see what this mean. Next day, what I started doing, I went around in the village. So when my list was complete, I had 42 names on my list who borrowed from the money lenders. And the total money they borrowed was $27. I couldn't believe people have to go through so much humiliation so much torture because of this tiny little money. The problem is difficult, but the solution is so simple. If I give this $27 to all these 42 people, they can return the money to the money lenders and they will be free. And that's what exactly I did. And I asked myself the question, if you make, can make so many people so happy with such a small amount of money, why shouldn't you do it more? And ever since, I'm trying to do it more and more and more. It, it's my pleasure to present the 2013 Global Treasure Award to our friend, Mohamed Yunus. I guess you figured out why I got this prize. In case you missed it, I'll tell you. I'm a very good friend of Jeff. <laughs> That's why he created a special category, because he couldn't fit me into any other place. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for this friendship. And we are celebrating this evening social entrepreneurship. And that's why we're here. And one of the biggest role played globally by Jeff is to bring the social entrepreneurs together. Itself, by bringing them together, it's a very explosive thing that uh, it leads everybody to the next step. Shaking hands with each other, looking at each other, learning what they do, and they want to do it themselves. And that is a fantastic role played by Jeff. It's called Foundation. And I want to propose a big applause for Jeff. We have applauded everybody. It's a wonderful role. He does it in such a dedication. And he has a good colleague with him, Sally. And let's give another applause for Sally. <laughs> well, you heard all the stories today. Each one is more exciting than the next, more inspiring than others. But this is what creates a, a new horizon for all of us to look forward to see what can be done. And it's within our capacity. 
and the people who are honoring today and who led the way. And that will become something which will change the world. And what I tried to do in my work, which is quite accidental, I was not designing to do something like that, probably is characterized by saying that I specialize in doing little things, very tiny things. You heard what I just said on the screen. So little. Anybody, anywhere can do that. It doesn't need any special skill, any special background, any kind of special foresight. And there are so many of them around us, so many little things that we can all do. And I was lucky that the little thing I tried, it worked. And that excited me. I had no idea. I had no background. I had no preparation for that. The more it worked, the more excited I got. And that's how it took from one stage to the next stage. On the way, you answer a lot of questions because people cannot believe what you do is right. And in the meantime, you persuade yourself in your own work what you do is right. And you try to explain to other people. Along the way, what became a kind of faith with me, the unlimited creative power of human beings, unlimited potential of human beings. You look at those pictures, all the pictures that we have been seeing in each case, the rural seen either in Africa or in Asia or whatever. None of them look like they have anything inside of them. But as a human being, each of them, each of us, has unlimited capacity, unlimited creative capacity to cope with the odds around us then why do we have to remain that way? Why can't they use that creative capacity and explode into a different level of living? Because we were not told that we had that capacity. Where society has been very unkind. We build a society where we are always, always telling them that you have no capacity at all, and they accepted that position. So one of the best things I think we can do to build the confidence in people and believe that they have the power to, to take control of their own lives. Today it becomes much simpler. In the past, probably it was difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. But today it becomes much simple because of technology. We are very lucky being on this day and age because things are happening on the technology front so fast. We can hardly cope with it. We keep changing models after models because the next model is better than the previous model. A lot more things in the next model and suddenly something new comes which you never thought about. Imagine what happened in the last 10, 20 years. If you go back 20 years, we are all more than 20 years old here, so you can easily go back 20 years. Try to imagine 20 years back, reflect what would be in 2013. I bet you could not imagine what we have right now. It's a science fiction-like thing that we have right now. And science fiction is a good thing 
we let our imagination kind of go up and kind of wild imaginations, Star Trek imaginations in science fiction. The important thing is science follows science fiction. If you didn't have the science fiction, probably science would not have come where it has. But we don't have social fiction. So society doesn't move very much. You need wild imaginations about society, like we do in science. If we had those social fictions, movies, TV series on social fictions, I bet you will create the societies. When Salman Khan stands up, talks about his Khan Academy, what I read about him, I listen to his speeches, always comes to my mind. We won't need Oxford anymore. <laughs> Whole world will be one big Oxford. We need only one global university, the best. You cannot beat them. It's possible today. But since we don't have social fiction, we don't imagine that. So the Salman Khan has to do it in his own way, whatever he does. And everybody becomes curious, but still it doesn't come in the shape it's ready to be. We can change everything by applying the technology. One thing I have been saying many, many years, I say someday we will have some gadgets which will be like Aladdin's lamp. And a poor woman in the village of Bangladesh, she will touch the gadget. And the genie will come out of it from the Aladdin's lamp. And genie say, what can I do for you? And she will say, look, I'm sick. I cannot do anything. I have to work. Otherwise, I cannot finish my work that I have to sell. And the genie will say, don't worry, ma'am. I'll find everything for you so that you'll feel better. And he will arrange everything. I thought I was talking about some very, very distant future. Today, everybody has that Aladdin's lamp in their pocket. It's called a cell phone or a mobile phone or whatever you want to call it. You touch it, digital genie comes out. What do you want? You want the restaurant, weather condition, or whatever all those apps that you, you are fond of. You touch them, digi digital genie answers your question. But digital genie answers your question to the extent manufacturers of those genie thought about. If the thought process of those manufacturers we could impact on, and instead of not instead of, in addition to giving information about the restaurants and their menu and their which dish is better than the others, they could have given us concrete solution to the problems that we have around us. Like today, the, no, no, there's no, absolutely no reason why anybody in the world should be illiterate. No reason. Digital genie is just ready. But nobody has prepared the digital genie to do the job. Learning to write, learning to read, learning to send letters would be such a fun thing for everybody. I see 80 year old grandma and five year old granddaughters fighting over this gadget. Who would like to have it so that he will start writing letters and so on? Because it's so easy to find out how to do that. Education should be fun. 
not a drudgery. But the way we design things is such a scary thing. Going to school probably in most of our countries is the most scary thing for kids, which shouldn't be. So it's a question of how we design things. Our resources are right in, in our hands, but we are not putting our mind into it. If we put our mind into it, it will happen. If we imagine, it will happen. If we don't imagine, it will never happen. So that's the power of social entrepreneurs, imagine things that doesn't exist now, but must exist tomorrow. Another faith that comes from the changes, the first change of the world, every day we see what was used to be impossible, just became possible and became routine. Forgot that one time it was impossible. Making photocopy was such an impossible thing in our lifetime. When Xerox machine came, what a wonder of the wonders. People forgot that there's a company called Xerox. But that was the miracle. Today, nobody worries about it. So if at that speed, impossibles become possibles, it will be hard time to make a list of impossibles in 20 years, 30 years down the line because you can't find anything what you call impossible. But all the right kind of impossibles would be addressed if you start imagining that. So that's the challenge to us. Why should anybody in the world be a poor person? Why can't we imagine a world not a single person will be a poor person? Is it that impossible? We are talking about human beings. Not some stones or some objective without life or anything, intelligence. In a human being which has unlimited possibilities. Why should anybody be unemployed? Have you ever thought about it? Is the, is the person who is unemployed is responsible for his, his unemployment? Is there something wrong with him? Wrong with her? No. He and she is very capable person, very intelligent, very work, active person. Then why is he, why is she is unemployed? Have we ever answered that question? Is it his fault or fault of the system? Why the system should condemn people? Shouldn't be the other way? People should be condemning the system. People is far superior than the system. But we accept the system as it is. We don't question. Let us question and redesign. We'll have a new world for us. Why should anybody be on welfare? Is there something wrong with that person? Nothing. But we got used to it. We ruined their lives because we accepted it. So you can go make your own list. Just ask the question, why? Nothing wrong with the person. Absolutely nothing. So it's all a question of putting our mind and redesigning here a little bit, here a little bit, or redesign the whole thing. And all these systems and institutions, the policies that we inherited for hundreds of years are not appropriate for this century anymore because our technology is taking us far ahead of the capacity of the institutions we built. So that's the challenge. That's what the social entrepreneurship that I understand is all about. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you.